help me understand this. For decades, we've been giving people the same health and nutrition advice, and it's getting us nowhere. Eat less, move more. More superfoods, more antioxidants, less meat, less cholesterol. And where are we now? A far cry from where we were when this focus on health and nutrition started. So as my own little health experiment, I thought I'd go over to Google and search for healthy diet tips and click on one of the links that came up on page one. And of course, give my thoughts. If you enjoy this video, please smash like and also please subscribe if you haven't already. And also consider supporting me on Patreon by clicking the first link in the description. Let's get into it. All right, so this website is uh, Medical News Today, and we've got 29 nutrition tips for better health and longevity. Wow, that's what I want, better health and longevity. So uh, we've got some hyperlinks here to parts of the article. What to eat, what to drink, what to avoid, other healthful habits and a summary. But let's just go through it one by one. I want to see all 29 of these nutrition tips. Okay, so nutrition tips for diet. Okay, don't eat what's pictured here. Uh, number one, include protein with every meal. Okay. Um, I would say that if you have to be told to include protein with every meal, that's probably uh, an issue of you eating a very high carbohydrate, high processed food diet, and as a result, you're not getting enough protein. Otherwise, no one should ever have to say, make sure you include protein with every meal, because it should naturally be there in the animal products that you are consuming. All right, eat oily fish. Okay, that's fair enough. Eat oily fish. Okay. Number three, eat whole grains. The American Heart Association recommend people eat whole grains rather than refined grains. Well, Dave Mack recommends that people eat no grains rather than whole grains. Uh, whole grains contain nutrients such as B vitamins, iron and fiber. B vitamins and iron can be found in uh, plentiful supply in uh, red meat and uh, there is no necessity for fiber unless you enjoy not going to the bathroom. Okay, these nutrients are essential for body functions. Fiber is not a nutrient, nor is it essential. So please, uh, please make sure you are aware of that. If you've never heard of uh, any concept around fiber except fiber is essential, you really need to look into it. Okay, uh, eat a rainbow. The saying eat a rainbow helps people, uh, helps remind people to eat different colored fruits and vegetables. I would look at that and say eat a rainbow because maybe there'll be a leprechaun at the end that you can also eat too and get some fat and protein. Um, you don't need to eat a variety of colors and no other species on the planet worries about the variety of colors in their diet. You don't see a panda going, oh, you know, I'm sick of green. It's just everything's green. I want some, I want some red occasionally. Um, that just doesn't happen, right? Uh, Number five, eat your greens. Okay, dark leafy, uh, dark green leafy vegetables are a great source of nutrition, according to the Department of Agriculture, the USDA. Well, if you've seen a lot of the USDA recommendations over time, then that uh, that statement, according to the USDA, is uh, you know meaningless. Um, the USDA also recommends uh, cereals, breakfast cereals and stuff like that, as far as I'm aware. So um, there you go. Um, six, include healthful fats. What's a healthful fat? Let's find out. So people should limit their intake of saturated fats while avoiding trans fats, according to the USDA. Again, the USDA. Okay. The USDA. 
Okay, a person can replace these fats with unsaturated fats, which they can find in foods such as avocado, oily fish, and vegetable oils. Do not eat vegetable oils. Number one, there are no vegetables in them. They are called vegetable oils to make you believe they are healthy. There are no vegetable vegetables in there. There are they are seeds. They are, the oil is extracted from seeds, and then. It is put through processing, which involves things like bleaching and washing in petroleum-like products um, and uh, deodorizing and getting it to a point where it doesn't look like black mud. And uh, you might want to put it, uh, you might want to cook with it because it's a bit easier. Um, well, and it's also got a heart logo on it. Um but uh, yeah, you don't want to be eating vegetable oils. So the uh, the fats that you should be consuming are saturated fats. That is what's healthy for you. Simple as that. Um, the USDA is um, yeah okay. Um, number seven, use extra virgin olive oil. As part of the Mediterranean diet, extra virgin olive oil has benefits to the heart, blood pressure, and weight, according to a 2018 health report. A person can include extra virgin olive oil in their diet by adding it to salads or vegetables or cooking food at low temperatures. You notice they said low temperatures there. The reason they said low temperatures is because cooking um, olive oil at a high temperature is similar to cooking vegetable vegetable uh, slash seed oils at high temperatures and it becomes unstable. So uh, that's why we should be cooking in saturated fats, fats like butter, lard, beef tallow, ghee, things like that. Um, if you are cooking uh, in olive oil, it's I think from what I'm from what I understand, I think it's almost as bad as cooking in any other seed oil. Um, the thing with olive oil is if you're not going to cook it, then I think if you're sprinkling it over something as some kind of dressing, then it's probably okay for you. But uh, actually actually heating it, it becomes almost as unstable as a, any other seed oil. Okay, eat nuts. Okay, so before we even get into this, if you are a person like the one you are watching now, who has been through a period of thinking that if he was eating nuts, then, you know, pretty much it was a healthy meal uh, if he couldn't get anything else. And having a lunch of like two bags of cashews, you will know, or two bags of almonds, you will know that uh, eating nuts is not a good idea. Um, and most of that relates to uh, subsequent bathroom activities which take place over the next seven days. So according to the end, that's not a joke. According to the AHA, eating one serving of nuts daily in place of red or processed meat, french fries or dessert may benefit health and prevent long-term weight gain. Well, eating anything in place of french fries or dessert will probably improve your health. I mean, in your long-term weight prospects, right? But why red meat? What's the evidence that red meat... You know, the, the thing is, if there's a study done and that study has um, decided that red meat is the devil, you know, like we're, we're talking about red meat, french fries or dessert, right? So we're probably... Some survey's been done where we're um, getting a lot of people that uh, tend to eat junk food responding to the survey. And uh, if you've got a Big Mac, um, they will be labeling that probably as meat, despite the fact it's full of sauces, which probably have seed oils in them, and um, it's got dehydrated onion, and it's got uh, the bun, and, you know, the Big Mac's got three layers of bun, right? And, and all that kind of stuff. But no, it's got some meat, so meat must be the problem. All right, so... and. You know, that's not even counting how the cheese is produced at McDonald's. But um, so, yeah, I, I don't, uh, I'm not defending nuts, right? I've had my own experiences with nuts. But um, I would uh, I would definitely uh, be a bit wary of saying that eating one serving of nuts a day in place of red meat is going to be healthy for you. It's not. Um, it goes on, the AHA suggests that Brazil nuts in particular may help someone feel fuller and stabilize their blood sugar. Okay. 
Um, I've, I haven't eaten Brazil nuts that much. I can't comment on that other than to say red meat's probably better for you. Uh, get enough fiber. Okay, just no. According to the AHA, fiber can help improve blood cholesterol levels and lower the risk of heart disease, obesity, and type 2 diabetes. Okay, so when we say, firstly, when we say improve, I always say improve. I've lived in Japan too long. Um, when we say improve blood cholesterol, what? How? who's defining improving? Who is making that definition? So improving, improving probably means lowering cholesterol to some ridiculously low level, right? In, in, uh, sorry, reducing LDL to a ridiculously low level. Um, and, uh, you know, you don't necessarily want to have your LDL reduced to a ridiculously low level. The level of LDL in your body is under the control of your genes. And people can get enough fiber in their diet by eating whole grains, vegetables, beans, and pulses. Or they can just not eat those things, not get any fiber, and be able to pass a bowel movement comfortably. So number 10, increase plant foods. Okay. Uh, research suggests that plant-based diets may help prevent overweight and obesity. Doctors associate obesity with many diseases. Okay. Um, so firstly, I believe that obesity is um, the, the result. I think it's the other things that cause the obesity. Um, the insulin resistance or the diabetes or, or whatever it is, is what causes the obesity. Um, according to some studies, including more plant foods in the diet, could, could, also could not, reduce the risk of developing diseases such as diabetes and cardiovascular disease. Or, you know what we could do? we could reduce all forms of carbohydrate in the diet and the risk of developing a disease such as diabetes goes to zero. And the chance of reversing existing conditions of diabetes goes up substantially. Okay, so reduce your carbohydrates to zero and see what happens. Uh, number 11, try beans and pulses. No, just, just don't. Um, number 12, drink water. Okay, if you need to tell someone to drink water, then there's a problem. Um, so many years ago, um, a friend of mine on Facebook, I shouldn't say, I'm not going to identify anyone, someone who I noticed a post of on Facebook quite a few years ago, someone who's older than me, I don't know how I know this, but someone who's older than me posted something like an update. Do you remember when Facebook used to say, such and such is thinking or such and such is saying and you kind of finish the sentence. This was around 2008, 2009. So around that time, um, they posted this update and it said something on the lines of, I found out this amazing thing today from the doctor. I mean, I'm paraphrasing, but it was along these lines. Um, I found out this amazing thing from the doctor today. The doctor told me that if you don't drink enough water, your pee is going to be yellow. And you can control the color of your pee just by drinking more water. And I was like, well, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, because if it's yellow, you're probably dehydrated. Um, and so, but, so obviously you do need to tell some people to drink water. But um, yeah, drink water. Okay, enjoy coffee. Um, a 2017 study suggests that moderate coffee consumption of three to five cups a day can reduce the risk of type 2 diabetes, Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, cardiovascular disease. I think the problem here, I mean, I'm a coffee drinker, but uh, the problem here is that all of these studies, uh, they're kind of, you know, they draw an association between something, but you don't really, it's a response to a survey, you know. Um, and responses to surveys are not going to be accurate. Uh, number 14, drink herbal teas. Uh, according to research, uh, cate I don't know how to pronounce this, catechins in green, black, and other herbal teas have antimicrobial properties. Herbal teas such as mint chamomile and ruibos are caffeine-free and help keep someone hydrated throughout the day. I would say just drink water. You know, if you're going to... 
I'm not big into herbal teas, but anyway, maybe it's relaxing for some people. Um, okay, number 15, nutrition tips for foods and drinks to avoid. Oh, Okay, 15, reduce sugar. Okay, good idea. According to research, dietary sugar dextrose and high fructose corn syrup may increase the risk of cardiovascular disease and metabolic syndrome. May There's no may about this. Will increase the risk of, will cause, it should say, will cause. People should look out for hidden sugars in foods that manufacturers label as names ending in O's. For example, fructose, sucrose, glucose, and BSOs. Natural sugars such as honey and maple syrup could also contribute to weight gain if someone eats them too often. Okay, so number 16, no argument from me except that it should be a bit stronger. Number 16, drink alcohol in moderation. Well, yeah, I mean, if you can do that, you know, and you enjoy a drink and it doesn't affect you negatively health-wise, um, that, that you're aware of at least, then, um, you know whatever have at it but i know for people like myself there's no such thing as moderation same with sugar it's either all or nothing you know so um for me that gate has closed okay number 17 avoid sugary drinks the cdc associate frequently drinking sugary drinks with weight gain and obesity type 2 diabetes heart disease kidney disease non-alcoholic liver disease tooth decay and cavities gout a type of arthritis people should limit their consumption of sugary drinks and preferably drink water instead Yes, they should. But actually, people shouldn't limit their consumption of sugary drinks. They should stop drinking them altogether. It is poison in a can. It's literally poison in a can. Um, and you are you are poisoning your body by ingesting this stuff. So we should drink water instead, yes. Um, number 18, eat less red and processed meat. Why? A large prospective study in the British Medical Journal indicates that U.S. adults eating more red and processed meat had higher mortality rates. Participants who swapped meat for other protein sources such as fish, nuts and eggs had a lower risk of death in the eight-year study period. Let's have a look at the study. Okay, so the uh, association of changes in red meat consumption with total and cause-specific mortality among U.S. women and men, two prospective cohort studies. Now, I had a quick look at this before, and what I want to take you to is the, uh, the methods, uh, do, 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 dietary assessment. The two cohorts completed a validated semi-quantitative food frequency questionnaire in 1986 and every four years thereafter. Participants were asked how often on average they consumed a standard portion of each food in the past year. Frequency response categories ranged from never or less than once a month to six or more times per day. Questionnaire items on unprocessed red meat, one serving 85 grams, including beef, pork and lamb as a main dish, hamburger, and beef or pork and, or lamb as a sandwich or mixed dish. I so, so here we go. Here's the first problem. Or lamb as a sandwich or mixed dish. So, okay, did you eat a hamburger that was kind of sandwichy in the last year? Uh, yeah, yeah, I did. I, I go to McDonald's quite often or I go to Burger King quite often. I, I see. Okay, so how how much would you eat? Uh, oh, I go to Burger King at lunch every day because that's the only thing that's near my work. Um, so, I, uh, yeah, I probably eat meat um, probably six times a week. Um, and if you include dinners, you know... Um, Yes, I have a hamburger when I'm doing overtime sometimes. So, uh, yeah, you know what? Uh, probably about 10 times a week I eat meat. Is that bad? And, you know, that's how people fill out the surveys. And, you know, we're measuring things here like hot dogs and stuff like this. And I realize processed meats as well. But, um, you know, people are people are confusing steak with no condiments and mcdonald's hamburgers or burger king hamburgers or wendy's hamburgers you know it's not the same thing because a steak traditionally doesn't come wedged between two buns with seed oils all over it in the form of sauces and you know sugars with ketchup and mustard and all that kind of garbage all right back to it okay so yeah eat less bread and processed meat yeah whatever 
19. Avoid processed foods. Okay, yeah, I think we can all agree to that. Just avoid them entirely is probably the best advice. Now, number 20. Support your microbiome. Why do we talk about the microbiome like it's a tent and there's a typhoon outside and we don't have a pole in the middle to hold the tent up? It's like... The microbiome adjusts to the way you're eating. No other species is like, oh, my microbiome. It's just, you know, that panda, you know, uh, like no other species does this. Okay. It's only us that thinks we are cleverer than our bodies. Don't worry about it. You don't need to support your microbiome. Okay, number 21. We're never going to get through this. So consider a vitamin D supplement. Um, okay. Or go out in the sun. Um, and, you know, stop slathering yourself in an inch of sunscreen. 22. Be aware of portion size. Well, you know, or you could just eat, stop eating crap and eat till you're satiated. Simple as that. Okay. Number 23. And I, not, I don't want to hear from the USDA anymore. Uh, number 23. Use herbs and spices or not. I mean, if, if you like that, use them. Um, you know, they're not a magical cure. You're not going to lose weight from herbs and spices. I'm sorry. Okay. Like, this is Oprah Winfrey stuff. You're not going to lose weight with superfoods and antioxidants and herbs and spices. Okay. Um, <laughs> 24. Give your body a rest by fasting. Okay. I'm, yeah, I've, I've fasted before. I, I mean, I do a 23 hour fast a day. I'm not going to say that there's anything wrong with that. Um, 25. Keep a food journal or just eat proper food and eat to society and leave it at that. Uh, 20. Don't make it more complicated than it needs to be. You don't need an app. Just eat satiating food. Okay, 26, wash fruits and vegetables. Raw fruit, just don't eat them. Stop wasting time washing the things. You don't need to eat them. Okay, 27, do not microwave a plastic containers. Okay, fair enough. Or just don't even use the microwave. Just, you know, cook everything on the grill. Fry everything or whatever you need to do. Um, 28, eat varied meals. No, eat food that's going to satiate you no other species worries about variety again the panda's not sitting there going oh i had this bamboo last night i'm sick of this you know and uh number 29 eat, mi eat mindfully in a 2017 study mindful eating helped adults with obesity eat fewer sweets and manage their blood glucose M another study suggests mindfulness can be a greater aware I'm not sure what eating mindfully is. You know, oh, I'm I'm aware of you, tomato. Um, so <laughs> I'm not sure what it is. Okay, so I would ignore that. Just eat real food. Eat to satiation. Stop eating when you feel full. And eat again when you feel like you need to eat again. It's as simple as that. Guys, thanks for watching. Please don't forget to click like and subscribe. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video.